Hey, Stan the Annuity Man. Stan the Annuity Man. So the question is, what are surrender charges and annuities? Now, not all annuities have surrender charges, but the ones that do, and we'll talk about both, but the ones that do, it is a way for the annuity company to make back their money that they paid out in commissions and administrative fees and business expenses if you pivot during the contract and try to get all your money back. It's similar to a CD. CDs have surrender charges. Some mutual funds have surrender charges. It's just a way for, for companies to protect themselves from some of the guarantees and some of the commitments that they make in order to lock in the guarantees that you want. So it's not some heinous, evil, let's stick it to them type thing. It's a, you know, it's business and it is what it is, but let's go through that. The other thing too, if you hang in there to the end of the video, I've written six owner's manuals, six, and I'll send them all to you for free and under no obligation because I really want you to understand all of these products and make a good, well-informed decision. So hang in there with me and we're gonna dig in. Okay, so let's talk about surrender charges. There are some types that don't have surrender charges, some types of annuities. Let's talk about those, get those out of the way, throw them out of the way. Single premium immediate annuities are pension annuities that start income between now 30 days within a year, you know, short term, it's an income now product. No surrender charges. That's an irrevocable contract that's gonna pay you an income stream for the rest of your life. You're ripping the knob off a water faucet and the faucet water's coming. In this case, it's income. Same thing with a deferred income annuity. There's no surrender charges on that as well. Um, it's a future pension plan that is irrevocable. Same with a qualified longevity annuity contract, also called a QLAC. Those uh, are also contracts that are annuitized, irrevocable. Uh, so you have to make sure that you're allocating your money in proportion and you fully understand that limitation. But deferred annuities are the ones that have surrender charges. I'm talking about the primary ones, variable annuities, fixed indexed annuities, and multi-year guarantee annuities, which are kind of CD products. All of those lock in for a specific period of time. They're not all the same. Some are longer than the other. Some are as short as one, two, and three years. But typically what you see with surrender charges is, is a declining percentage over time. Let me give you an example. And this is just a, a broad example because all carriers and products are different. So in the uh, paperwork, so the agent should be showing you that. If I'm your agent, I will show you that. Um, but let's just say you buy a 10 year indexed annuity. Uh, typically this surrender charges will be 10%, 9%, 8%, 7%, declining all the way down to when you get to the, the final year, there's no surrender charges to get your money out. Now, people say, well, that's tough. What if I need money? Well, typically with most deferred annuities, there's a, a provision inside of each of them that allows you to take out some percentage without penalty. Most deferred annuities, it depends on the contract, five to 10% annually you can take out without penalty. Um, but then there's some multi-year guarantee annuities that don't allow that. Once again, everything's not the same with annuities. I know everyone says they're all the same or I hate them or they're all expensive. It's, it's garbage. Or there's surrender charges in all annuities. There's not. I just told you about SPIAs, DIAs, and QLEX that don't even have surrender charges. So you should look at surrender charges uh, from the standpoint of, of how long you're going to lock in the money. So if 10 years sounds too long, then you need to look at a shorter term. Most agents, unfortunately, especially like in the bad chicken dinner seminar circuit where they're pushing indexed annuities, a lot of those are long term, like a 10 year term. Um, I'm not saying that's bad, it's just, it's the product. Uh, but there are shorter term indexed annuities that you can look at and evaluate as well. Same with multi-year guarantee annuities. You could buy a 10-year multi-year guarantee annuity fixed rate, or you could go buy a five-year or a three-year, and sometimes they're as short as one and two years. It just depends on what your goals are. So always ask questions about, okay, duration. What, how long do I want to lock the money in? And if you're in your 70s, 80s, 90s, not 90s, but 70s and 80s, you don't need to be locking money in long term. And there's an argument for the youngsters out there in the 50s and 60s that you really don't need to be locking in long term as well because if interest rates move, you do want to capture those interest rate movements. I'll uh, give you an example. Here's a story. You know, someone called me and said, hey, I want to buy a 10-year fixed rate annuity. And I think at that point in time, he, he was talking to me, I think it was like a 4% kind of date this, this video a little bit. Um, and I said, yeah, I don't know if you want to do that. Why don't you just buy the five year? And so, because I don't feel comfortable with him locking in that long, just looking at 
what's called yield curve analysis, where the benefit is on the yield curve. In other words, in English, that means where does the benefit stop the longer I lock in? And in my opinion, at the time the person called me, it was five years. Five years was max. So I convinced him to do a five-year product. And I think he's going to be very happy because within five years, I think we're going to be able to roll it to something better. Plus, I'm just not a big fan of locking in long term unless you have to. Oh, here's another one. I forgot to tell you this. Now, all annuity types, they pay commissions to the agents, okay? So they're built in and hidden from you, which I'm not sure that's good. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, we, you can argue about it, but every agent, if I'm your agent and I sell you an annuity, I'm going to get paid by the carrier. It's a net transaction to you. And you're going to see if you put in $100,000, you're going to see $100,000 go to work, but I get a, a commission one time from the carrier. Now, how does that play into surrender charges? One of the reasons surrender charges are in place with deferred annuities is to pay back the company. See, they pay the agent the commission up front. They have administrative cost up front. So with a lot of deferred, in, deferred annuities, like a fixed indexed annuity, the break even point for the carrier is, is years down the road. So if you buy a fixed indexed annuity and you say a year, and it's a 10 year contract, in year three, you say, hey, I'm getting out, I'm out. I want to get, and you pay the, you have to pay the surrender charges to get out. Why? Because the carrier has to kind of recoup all of those uh, upfront costs. So again, it's not some evil plot, it's just business. Uh, and, but that's the reason that the surrender charges are higher at the front end of the contract and lower at the back end of the contract. All right, we've made it to the end. Aren't you happy? One thing I want you to do, I did um, do a video, pretty interesting not controversial, but factual on how insurance companies make money on fixed indexed annuities, which a lot of people want to know because it's a controversial topic. It's a popular product. I would encourage you to take a look at that. So let's talk about how you get these books from me, how I'm going to ship them to you. First of all, hit the subscribe button because I do these videos all the time. So they're educational. And if you have a video topic that you kind of want me to cover, email me at stan at stantheannuityman.com. So hit subscribe. Also, go down to get these books, go to the more info. Let me show them quicker, slower. Go to the more info button down below and you'll click that and it'll open up and expand and you'll see a link to fill in shipping information and we'll ship them to you and you'll get them about seven to 10 days. And, and don't hesitate to ask for a quote or if you wanna contact us, you certainly can do that at stantheannuityman.com. See you next time.